we, we'd get rocking and rolling. And it, I didn't want to take all the blame because this gentleman here is my boss, Mr. Eric Cohen. I didn't buy this suit just for, uh, for PyCon Ireland, although it has fitted in quite nicely. I bought this suit for the opening of our new Galway office, and I rocked up in this suit with the T-shirt there. And my boss, he lives over in America. He just wrote the, the sentence on, on our EIM. When he saw the pictures, he just said, sharp dressed man, CZ top. And I was like, you're dead right. When I said, I'm going to do this talk here today, he goes, sharp dressed man. And I was like, yes, I will do it. And I did it, and it didn't work. But uh, it's, if this goes brilliantly, it'll be all me, and I was brilliant. But if it's bombs and this doesn't go well, we're blaming him, OK? OK? Way. All right, the, the, uh, one of the other reasons I'm here is because I run two different communities back in Galway, the Google Developers Group and the Atlassian User Group. So I'm always trying to tell people, why don't you just go up and give a talk? You can give a talk not as an expert, but just that you did something cool and you are willing to share it with the community, which is awesome. And more people should do that. You guys run or attend meetups, and it's nice to have new people up and talking and sharing their experiences. This gentleman here is another reason that I'm here today. You may know him, he's, he presented, this is Ronan Hayes, he presented back at PyCon back in 2016. He did, he did a talk, as you can see there, get your code to do your job for you. We met uh, on an engineering team in the Midlands, and he told us this story, he had the little video, and we just thought that was so cool. So I was like, that's one for the list. If I can get on and do a talk for PyCon, I would figure, you know, that's one, another one ticked off that list. So here I am. That's the link here to, uh, to Ronan's talk, if you want to have a watch of it. Uh, I'll be using a lot of QR codes today as well to, to keep things moving, to communicate with you guys. So get the phones out, get ready to take uh, to, to get the link. Now, uh, the reason I built this project, and none of you are going to like this, a bit of compliance. Everyone loves a bit of, a bit of compliance. Me and my boss, Eric, that you saw earlier, uh, we had to undertake the FedRAMP security assessment. There are 326 controls in there, and I was like, I'm not doing that by hand. <laughs> I think that's probably the start of many, many projects going, I'm not doing that by hand. So that's where the Jira scripting project came from. Now, there is a happy ending to that story. We did, we did get it in process, and we're awaiting our ATO. And there's Eric's name there. Look at him go. Delighted. Um, so what's next? Uh, I had envisioned this, uh, this talk going rather rapidly, and I had this wonderful video, and if you haven't seen it, you should look it up. But since the sound's not working now, this is not going to play very well. So if you haven't seen um, Mr. Harry Potter doing the, uh, the alphabet aerobics, it's, a, it's an amazing video. It starts off nice and slow, and he starts building it up, building it up, building it up, and you would have been under serious pressure. I know, I'm sorry. I, okay, I'm sorry. But since the sound doesn't work, we're going to have to just pretend we all know this video, and we'll just move swiftly on, and let's get on with it. So, go. There we go. So my job is going to get us from A to Z. That's, that's how we're going to go, because the alphabet aerobics tie in. Did you all notice that? Yeah? Wonderful. So I guess made to see your job is. Come on, I'm not seeing it. Let's go. Every... No, okay. Fair enough. That's fine. Okay, so here's the code. Uh, you, can, you can navigate to this repo now. It is live open GitHub. And I do want to preface this, like many other people here today or yesterday, that hey, this is just me doing stuff. Please be kind. <laughs> so we'll start off A to E. We're going to start off with just get to know your Jira Cloud instance, because not all Jira Cloud instances are the same. This is the, if you've gone on and got the repo, this is what it will look like. You'll notice everything is separated out, kind of into a code format where we could sit down and run through this together if we had the need to. And I've just kind of moved it into, a, like, let's do this as a presentation. So we're going to start off with, what do we need first? You want to get your API key. This is where all good things start when you're going to, do, you're going to go into the web. Go in, grab your API, API key. Once you've downloaded the project, you're going to fill in the details al along, with the, along with the URL, and you're ready to go. This is a get to know your own project. All of these things here on the left, I've had to refer to one or two or more times. Problem with these is that Jira is extensible. You can go, hey, Mr. Jira admin person, I want this state for my project to be moved into. And they go, no problem at all. And they go and make it for you. Problem with naming, allowing people to name things is that they can go awry very, very quickly. So you can have unknowns or misspelled things or things that are spelled differently, slightly different with hyphens and whatnot. So it's good to know you get to, own, you get to know your own instance. Right or wrong, I built a helper methods uh, file and just threw all of the methods I was going to use in there with a big if name equals main down at the bottom where I just comment out everything but the one I wanted to immediately run a test on. I haven't figured a better way of doing that. Maybe someone in the room here can help us out with that in the future. But uh, that's, where all the, that's where all the helper methods were stored. So moving swiftly on, 
This is the MVP, as was mentioned uh, earlier. This is story creation. This is your smallest, smallest thing you're going to work on when you're working with Chira. And um, as I said, we're building this as if we were running through this uh, in code, and we're going to sit down and run, run this and build on the smallest items first. There's a very, very helpful API from, uh, from Atlassian that when you go in there and it goes, this is how you create a story, and it gives you every option that you could possibly have for creating a story, and it is a minefield, and you do not need most of it. As I discovered through a lot of pain and trial and challenges and finding out what has to go where and what is necessary and how we, how we should be doing things. So this is all we need. These are the only fields we do need. We run this and we create a story. Now, in this, uh, now, yesterday, one of yesterday's talks, Samir talked about using async.io. Maybe this could be a candidate for do this, to doing this. I kind of had an idea that I'd do things in the cloud and use, use pipes rather than, uh, rather than asynchronously doing it. But we, we'll see. There's a lot of research to be done there yet. Maybe. So this is creating, this is run through all projects, one, uh, one of the helper methods, getting all projects that I created in this test instance and just creating a story in each of them. So we're off, and we're off and running. That's as simple as it needs to be if you're just going to create those simple stories. Now, we're going to give some gold away straight away, and this I found is to assign stories to people. When you create a, a Jira ticket and just put it out there into the world on someone's board, it goes onto the backlog and disappears forever. That's just what happens. So uh, if you assign a ticket to someone, at least they'll know that it exists and gets there, but it's very, very hard to assign tickets in Jira. You have to assign it using their, their user ID. And there isn't, you can't look it up by email address, which is really difficult. So I built a method where you can go get all assignable users. Your instance will go away and create a JavaScript object, bring that back and say, here's now a list of all of your assignable users, people you can assign stuff to, separated by email. And if you put in the email, it will return you the, uh, the ID. So then you're off you go. You can now assign tickets to people. Now you can go and annoy your coworkers. You can assign them 100 tickets in five minutes, should you wish to do so. They won't thank you for it, but you can do it. <laughs> okay, this is the assignable users method. Now, when I was doing this, I went, oh no, this doesn't work, it's broken. And then I went, oh no, hold on. My instance at work is a company managed instance, so a lot of things are set for me. Like when you guys are using Jira and work, there's a lot of stuff that's done for you that you don't have to do. So when I was set up my own, I just went do, 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 done. And uh, I went and didn't set this. See who can see this? Anyone? This is me going in to see who can see my email address. It doesn't mean anyone on the internet. It just means anybody that has access to your Jira instance. So it's right down the bottom there, and that's it. If it's set to public, you're good to go. You will have access to email addresses. Otherwise, you will have to use display names. And we all know what happens when you allow people to name things. This can be horrible. So. You want to use those email addresses should you, wish to, should, you, should you have access to them. Right, as we said, sometimes you don't know who you want to assign a ticket to, but you know the ticket needs to be created. Maybe it's on a service team or maybe on a service team's project. So you can just assign it to the, to the project owner. It's nice and handy. Get the, I've got account ID and uh, display name there. You can, uh, you can hammer away at that and make sure it is assigned. There is another f thing that you know, I, just, I, I had to give out about this. And I didn't know where to put it in, so I got stuck here. When I was doing my research uh, across moving this project from my work project to uh, a, a personal project, this was the way it was done for linking issues. So when you want to link a, a Jira story to a Jira epic, it seems like a fairly normal thing people should want to do when working with Jira tickets. It was custom field 10014, and that was not the same number across different instances. Luckily, they've changed it to parent. That's only in the last few weeks. So, well done, Atlassian. Thank you very much, guys. You've helped us out a lot. Thank you very much. But it did become a lot easier that way. Uh, and I just wanted to bitch about it, really, so that's why it's in there. There's no other deeper meaning for it, deeper meaning than that. That was it. Um, right, so I want to start keeping a record of stuff. That's where this project starts to build on itself, right? We know how to create stuff. But as we're moving in, and the project manager and me came out a little bit going, I need to know how to reconnect with these people once things are, are created. Maybe their individual tickets aren't linked to an epic, and there's no way to find them other than trying to remember where you sent them. So start keeping a, start keep, just a little JSON object, start putting things into it, write it to a file, job done. Then I found this lovely little HTML converter, which produces this thing down the bottom, which is much easier for non-technical managers to read and understand and appreciate. Now, this is a very basic instance. We've only got three projects, and it's, it's quite small, but we do build along this, along, the, uh, along through this project. So that was stories. Next is epics. 
I've already had my little bitch about epics and, gen and, and joining them to stories, so um, we can go straight into this. As same, uh, same way of working as earlier, so into epics creation, create an epic. Uh, it's more or less the same as a story. There's one extra field that is mandatory. Now, if you go to the API, they'll show you all the things you can put into an epic. This is what is needed, just one extra, one extra line, just the epic name. You can also link epics to other epics, which is then moving it beyond just a two-level thing where you have epic story task. Now you can have like an initiative or an Uber epic and start linking these together. That's what we did when we were working with all the different control families for FedRAMP. They had the control families as epics all linked to an Uber epic and then your stories underneath them. Much easier to track and see what areas need to work or who's fallen behind. Keep track. And that is it. That's all I wish to say about, uh, about epics. Let's move in here. We are up to creating from a CSV. We're making really good time because we had Mr. Harry Potter embarrassed me, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, <laughs> creating from a CSV, now we're getting into most reports you're gonna get are from someone who say, hey, can you just do this and open these tickets, Mr. Jirodonkey? And you go, fine. So mostly it's in a CSV or it's in a, an Excel spreadsheet which you can convert yourself. But in this project, I have kept an access ways of working, so you can use either uh, CSV or you can swap it out yourself in code, I didn't do it for you, uh, to Excel spreadsheets. So, very simple, just put it in a for loop. Does it need to be any more difficult than that? I don't think it does. I mean, now we're, we're, we're ready to go. Now, this does look a bit weird, I do appreciate that, but from my experience when creating these tickets, if you do not push this bit of text over to the left-hand side, it just sees it as free space and puts your, the words awkwardly in the middle of the paragraph space in the JIRA ticket when you go and look at it. So that's why I say it, but that's it. This, it we, we know how to create a ticket, we'll just put it in a for the read from the CSV file and away you go. Now, we're still in the building stage, believe me, we're, I'm going to try and be more impressive later on, just, uh, okay? Just, just, we all still with me, by the way, yeah? Okay, yes, okay, cool. Let's bring up the quality, because when we send tickets out to Jira developers, and I found this, uh, when we're looking for feedback from the different development teams when I've, when I've sent them out tickets, and they're just like one paragraph, all text, and it just reads in a long line and loops, it's hard to get the information from it, and you know, they, they, they bloody know that it's been generated with a script. They know you didn't do that, and they just go, oh, come on. So, use a description document. This is, uh, it, does, it adds a little bit of overhead when you're starting out your, your project. But, and this is a recent development where the ADF Builder has been launched by, by Atlassian. There's a link to it on the QR code. This sentence here, hello, PyCon Ireland, and the wave, hello, guys, um, is this whole dictionary over here on, on, on the left. It, it's quite large because they separate everything out into their own, into their own unit. So I just copy-pasted that, put it into a file, and then imported that file in where I wanted and used some substitution with the, with the format string option, and away I went. That was, that was it. I did keep the string, uh, that file out separate, so it didn't make the initial main file, or script, massive. Maybe that's right or wrong way. You're the Python experts, you guys can tell me. So, uh, I stored some projects, the ones that I built for myself in this training CSV file, created a big heap of them. This is how it looks. It just turns out nicely, everything attached to, a, to an epic, and I can track everything how it's going. It doesn't need to be any more difficult than that except when you want to uh, start being able to follow up with people or when you need to track these things in a larger area or you, you're noticing people, you can't assign things, they get assigned to a project donor and nothing's happening with them. You go, I need to, a better way to tell people this work needs to be done because it's important. Or maybe it's not. Someone else thinks it's important, which means it's my job to get it done. That's the honest truth of it. <laughs> so. This is, our, this, is, this, is the, this is the crescendo. This is what we've been building up to for the last 15, 20 minutes after Harry let me down. Um, this is where we're going, and this is where I was panicking on. I hope I get to the good bit at the end. But uh, without Mr. Harry, we've, we've done quite well. Although I am upset that we didn't get to play Sharp Dressed Man. We should probably get someone to get that ready for afterwards. Yeah, good girl. Okay, same as last time. We're gonna, we're gonna go through, and you can see the files that I've kept out the way. It's just so they don't make the body of the main uh, any bigger than it has to be. So, same as the last way, same as the last file, when we just went to the for loop, created everything, I've just added in an email block. When I've created the ticket, get the return, get the, get the key for that, that ticket, 
put it in the email, send it off to people. That email is, is there, it can, take, um, it can take attachments as well. It's all there for you. This is the, what the email looks like. Just love hearts are, are, are appreciated by all developers I've discovered, so use them liberally. Um, just use your string, and, uh, just use format string, pump everything in in HTML format, and it turns out fantastically. Now, I know this is so wasted, isn't it? Mr. Harry let me down big time. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> okay, these are the important bits. I've just, I've just opened a, a, created a JSON object. If one didn't exist already in the file system, I've created it in memory. When I'm going down to, I'm going to use the, use the create the rope into a tuple, because uh, hash lib can't hash row, can't hash CSV rows, but it can with tuples. Interestingly enough, after I wrote this, I discovered, oh, would it be easier just to put them in one by one from the list? It is, and it works better, because none will throw an error, and you should probably, I should probably change that. Or one of you can change it, do a pull request and change that for me. No? Okay. <laughs> so once I keep a hash of the, of, of the record I've, I've, I've worked on, um, then, I can build, then I can build another JSON object when everything has been done and, done and dusted, and I then add to, I can add to create it down here. So once that row is created, and should I have to go back through something or something has happened where I was connecting to an instance in work where we have uh, a, a record of teams to projects to, Units of code. You may you may have different connections or ways to make those links between people's teams, project managers, and you need to have things rooted in a different way. And you'll connect those ways. And this is where you're going to have small little issues. Then something will break, and you go, ah. Oh. And before keeping a record, you used to have to go in and delete the first 15 rows of the CSV file, run again because you've now fixed it at layer on row 16. So I've just discovered just keeping the hash of the row and stuff I've done is much easier and I can just hit run again. This is how I've been doing it and I've been seeing a lot of great success. So in this little video here at the end, I've, I've made two different files, or three different files. One has, one has three rows in it, one has six rows in it. So the first one there, I've just created the three, first three rows that I've manually pressed stop and said go away and said do it again. And it, it, it just it doesn't create the first, it doesn't create them, but just says, hey, this is already here, here's your file, that's already done, don't worry about it, continue on. So when I run the file, the next file with six, uh, six rows, the first three rows are repeated from the first, from the first file, so it won't create those, because it already knows it's done it, and we'll just continue on and create the last three. Interestingly enough, the uh, Dunder methods mentioned in, um, in, the, in one of the talks yesterday by our Good MongoDB friend, uh, we have a, there is a hashing method, but it only works for it only guarantees to give the same hash within the, within any one session. Once you close a session and reopen a session, it can be anything. You know, so I had to so I had to use a custom a custom hashing method. So this is my massive JSON list after it was after it was built. You can see the items that were created, and then this is the item. This is the things I've stored for each one of those items, which in itself is going fine, Dave. You showed me how to create an epic. You've showed me a for loop. Thanks very much for that. And you've uh, shown me just to keep records in JSON. We've all used that. We're all you know living in a cloud native world, right? Brilliant. But what I've used that file for after the fact is. Once I, want to, once I want to communicate back out, once those stories have been created, things aren't moving along as they should, as, they, as we've expected, time is running out, maybe there's a compliance audit coming up, and we're really got our, you know, we're pinned to the wall here. We can, uh, we can comment on each one of these not closed stories using the, the status category, not the status, because we all know what happens when you let people name things. Um, the status category is different, it's got new, Unknown and done. So if we're not in a done status category state, I want to I want to put a comment on here. We again use the assignable user uh, method to go find out what the uh, what the ID of the user is by using their email because that we know as, as it's easy to remember those. And then we can add comments as you can see over on the left hand side here. Yay. Adding comments is one thing, but what happens if we want to do a serious follow up? We need to email these people. No problem. We know how to email people. We've done that earlier on. So we can just go through that, J that JSON object. What is that? This, <laughs> if the sound starts playing now and you start hearing Harry Potter rap, <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> Mistimed, but amazing. So uh, we already know how to send emails. 
we already know we can separate it. And this is what it, this is what it looks like when you separate out the email. You can put you can use your HTML in whichever way suits you best. It's raw, so you can just fire at it. You can add attachments should you wish to do so. Uh, we can also keep a record of every every communication we send out, so that we know if we go through this again th that things. If someone goes, oh, you know, when you never told me, yes, I did. <laughs> it's right here. So we can we can open tickets, open massive amount of tickets, assign them to people. We can send, we can comment on it to say, hey, this ticket is for you. It needs to be actioned. We can email people. We can send email uh, notifications going, look, it's been three weeks. This really needs to get done. We're really under pressure. And as the little bonus extra, I, I, and this is, you know, I'm, I'm glad I put this in after so many people did such a fantastic job. If anybody saw Alan Hunt's presentation earlier, I was going, my graphics are not going to be as good as Alan's but I'm really glad that I did it anyway. <laughs> so this just produces a, uh, an interactive diagram, sunburst chart, where you, can, where you can send off to maybe a higher manager who needs a report to see what percentage of the files or, or of the tasks have been done. That has reached the end of the, of the presentation. You may have mentioned me notice some variables being called DevFest. This is a Google developers group thing we're holding in, in two weeks in, uh, in, uh, in two weeks down in Galway. If anybody's interested, you're more than welcome to come and hang out with us. Um, here's the code again. If you missed it earlier on, you want to have a poke around. If you think you can improve upon it, I really wish you would. It'll make all of our lives easier and better. And if I have traumatized you by talking about Jira tickets and uh, compliance audits, uh, Vanessa will console you. And that is the end of everything. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Yes, Harry Potter is brilliant at rapping. You should look it up immediately, if not sooner. It isn't it? I'm, it always puts me in such good humor. I enjoy listening to you more. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Uh, thank you for the loan of you. your clicker. Um, so you, you showed at the start that you need to make your email address public for it to be accessible yes. by the API. Um, is that true of everybody that you're communicating with? It's either going to be set or not set by the corporate instance when they set up the JIRA instance. Oh, Most of the time it is, and it just, it's just public for people that already have access to that Jira instance, not the general public. Yeah, but it is a broader thing than just sort of setting in one. Well, it yes, needs to be it set needs up to be everybody. It, would need to be, it does need to be everybody, yeah. Thank Otherwise, you. you won't be able to see it, and it'll return a blank string, and you'll, it will, it'll return the username, and then you can use that, but that has its own issues. And you can't follow up with emails, then? You can't follow up with emails. Unless, of course, you have another system which has usernames and emails, and that's not guaranteed to be the same username, because you'll have hyphens, underscores, different spacing, and it just won't match as a text match. Unless we have an ish method from, uh, from yesterday. <laughs> yeah, we could have an ish on that, and that would work awesomely. I should probably do that. Yeah, it starts to do that to people, ish. So ish it is starts nice. to be the solution to every problem. <laughs> anyway, I'll hand the microphone back. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any more questions? Zalando is where you get these suits. They're awesome. <laughs> no? <laughs> Zalando spikes immediately. <laughs> Hi, uh, thanks for the talk. Um, the lot, a lot of the code you showed here seem to be from a PM or manager point of view. Like, have you any tips, or could you use this code as a developer or an analyst, say, want to enhance your own productivity rather than manage a team? I have no idea. Honestly, this, this project was built by me going, shit, I've opened 300 tickets. How am I going to do this? I'm not doing this by hand. Literally, that was it. And then there was different things that were happening. Like we had a lot of security announcements that no one wants to talk about, where all code bases needed to be checked, and it needed to be verified that these particular things were not in our code base or in any of yours. So opening those type of tickets, this was a really good use case for that as well. And then being able to track how many were coming back and how many were closed, how long it took, and that we could prove to different you know, most companies have software they sell, so they have customers, and the customers come back and go, hey, were you affected by X, Y, and Z? You can go, yeah, we've had done a, an investigation, here's our investigation, where any teams that had code bases that were affected have now upgraded, and it's all good. And it brings them an enormous sense of well-being, and maybe that's a use case for, for developers. It's really getting information in, in a timely fashion, that they need to check and be done, and a way to communicate out without having to answer the same question 15 times to different managers. But if you, have a more, if you want to have a chat at any point, I'm going to be here. Or you can uh, contact her if I've scared you. <laughs> Good, thank you. You're very welcome.
Yeah, uh, great suit. Just Thank you very much, sir. Suits you very well. Uh, so it, it's a bit of, let me just steal some time and tell to the previous person that uh, you can actually do it and it's nice and uh, the API is shit for Jira in general, but uh, sort of you can at least start reading your comments for the tickets from the command line and it saves you some time. So every time I join a company that uses Jira, at some point after like three or four months, I start to write my own tools for particular Jira because I hate the interface. And it usually ends up being very different between Jira instances because of that particular crap that you mentioned, the yeah. component underscore blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And you said that for one particular case, they changed it to parent and it's nice, but what do you do with others that you probably want to? Do you just hard code them or do you store it somewhere? Like what, what was your I go, I go and find out. That's, and that's literally what I have to do. And what I did in this case was, uh, I always say when, I, when I'm delivering this in a person, we're going through this in code. Once you've made your account, build a, build, make, make a Jira project, make an epic, make a story, and attach it to it manually. Then you can use this code to go in and just get, get issue, and it will print out the entire issue in its entirety, so you don't have to go through the, uh, the command, you don't have to go through the little box and go next, next, because you lose things in that custom field, blah, 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 and it just all looks the same, and it's nonsense. So you have that in that code? Yep, it's yeah. in the helper methods. That's exactly what I would do. And awesome. Yeah, because you've had the same issues with me and pulled the hair out. I'm further down the line than you, obviously. Uh, <laughs> but yes, that's there. Um, I, this talk just wasn't long enough to go into all the helper methods. Thank, Thank you. you. Good question, though. Anybody else? Oh, we're all done? Thank you so if much. If we have no you more questions, we'll accept, we'll Sorry, accept alphabet talk. aerobics. Huh? If there's no more questions, does anyone know alphabet aerobics? <laughs> uh, we'll do a walk off. We can do a walk off. Sure, <laughs> aren't at all amazing. Analytically, I assault animate things. Broken barriers bound in by the bomby. Buildings are broken. Basically, I'm bombarding. Casually create catastrophes. Casualties canceling cats. Got the canopies collapsing. Detonate a dominant. You can compare too. Come on. <laughs> Demonstrations. <laughs> anyway. That was, that, that was how that was supposed to go. Was, we were supposed to get very, very amped and it was going to be great. And then Harry let me down. All that time in Hogwarts was well spent, I'd say. So. Uh, <laughs> all that time worrying before the talk. Well, that was like, what am I going to do with myself for two minutes while Harry raps? Uh, and all kinds of things. And then I was going to come and apologize to you because he gets really fast at the end. I'm sorry. I didn't know you were going to be here in my defense, though. So, you know. <laughs> you would have gone, I'm not doing this guy again. No, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for coming to my talk, and if you have any questions, hit me up. <laughs>